this last question be I know you want to talk about a little bit is um uh, CrowdStrike. I know you want to touch on I kind of like the magnitude of that. And and it was pretty interesting. I didn't know they they had uh it's not, people try to call it a monopoly. I wouldn't say it's a monopoly, but I didn't know that much of everybody's environment was touching CrowdStrike to that um capability. Then finding out Outside of that, certain companies operationally and IT wise are lagging behind and don't have the support that they need to come back with something like that super fast. Because somebody, I was talking to a friend, I forgot what they, they but they were telling me they they know somebody that works for for Delta and was pretty much stating like, hey, they are still using like some of the oldest of old stuff. I think they were saying they were using like uh, Microsoft Access databases for for a lot of the things and. That they were taking so long to come back up because of other stuff. But, you know, it was good. Granted, CrowdStrike had their part to play in it, but it's always good to find you a scapegoat yeah. when somebody like, because it's not a, in security, it's not an if, it's a when. So the win finally happened and you knew it was going to happen and you weren't ready for it. And so now you can say, well, CrowdStrike did it. It's CrowdStrike's fault. Like it, everything's just CrowdStrike's fault. <laughs> so you see, you've seen them on the last couple of weeks going back and forth with Delta and yep. CrowdStrike going back and forth and CrowdStrike stating like, hey, we tried to reach out and help you guys a certain way, but you guys denied the help. But in essence, I guess you can summarize, you know, from a sea levels perspective, you know, what do you think about the whole conundrum? It is. It's a great question. Um, let's wheel back. I don't work for CrowdStrike. Um, I have other than friends that are fairly high levels at CrowdStrike. I have no vested interest in CrowdStrike as a conversation point. So I have no reason to be nice to them or not nice to them. Like they're not my employer. Right. Um, quite frankly, they compete with us in most spaces. So like I, I, I have no reason to be nice to them. Um, but this is not a CrowdStrike problem. You have humans writing code. There's going to be bugs. There's going to be issues. It's just a matter of time. This has happened multiple times before with other companies, um, you know, outside of McAfee, because a lot of people point back, yeah, it happened with McAfee. And, you know, some of the same names that were at McAfee then were at CrowdStrike now. So it, it must be their nonsense. This is going to happen. It's happened outside of um, cybersecurity as well. You got software. Sometimes software going to have a bug. Things are going to go bad. Facts. Full stop. So I don't, I, I, this isn't a CrowdStrike problem. If you as a company don't have proper disaster recovery procedures that you've accurately tested and you regularly test them, like, can you actually do a restore? I ain't asking you, is the tape there? But can you actually, re do you have the tools you need to restore if and when something bad happens? And do you know the dependencies? That's the key term here. That to restore, I'm going to need an Active Directory up. And if my Active Directory goes down and I don't have a master domain controller, I can't restore. Do, have you prepared for that? Most companies, that's where the thing falls now. But I've been doing backups every day. Yeah, but I can't restore them now because the thing that the backup needs is blown up. Um, so that's a company process and process discipline problem. And that is often a problem in cybersecurity because the cybersecurity industry has made security and securing organizations that are non-cybersecurity industries. So, you know, airlines would be a good one. They ain't care about cyber. They care about flying planes. Candidly, I want them caring about flying planes because I want them planes to never crash because I'm on them a lot. So the cybersecurity as industry has made it exponentially difficult for them to do cybersecurity well. That's what led to this problem. So they, they, it, vendors, customers have multiple tools across the industry doing EDR and DLP and this and that, and, and they don't, the tools don't talk well together. Then you need specialized people to manage the tools. And one guy can only manage a network and this other guy can only manage the endpoint. This other guy can only manage the data loss prevention. And none of them talk together. And that's what causes issues like this. So this is a process and a process discipline issue. So anything we can do as an industry to simplify this and allow businesses to be able to focus on what their primary business is airlines, banking, flying planes, et cetera, 
while experts do the cyber security part of it, that's what we need to get back to. Simple. And I say simple, it's not simple. So it requires a lot of cultural change, but that's where, that's what I think drove this entire, um, you know, debacle with the blue screen of death. I will say there is a perception now that, oh my God, I didn't realize, and you said it, I didn't realize that, you know, so many, um, there was so, so much market share controlled by one vendor. That's not what it is. There isn't really a lot of market share controlled by one vendor. They've done studies on this. Um, the, the segregation of market share for that type of product is about 16%. So, you know, CrowdStrike owns between 16 and 20%. That's of the market of computers that are out there running, you know, these types of tools. 16, 20% tops is owned by that one company. So it's not like, you know, more than 50% of systems around the world are using this. But what happens in our very technologically connected world there is dependencies and interconnectivity that are not obvious. So if your hospital AC controller is running that software and your hospital AC controller goes down, so and your hospital is in Phoenix, Arizona, and it's 110 degrees outside, and now your AC ain't working, all of your other systems are up. Your MRI machines are working, your doctors are there, they can pull up records, but inside the hospital is getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Your entire hospital now needs to close down because you cannot control the one system that controls your AC. So that level of, because of how technologically interconnected we are, that's what causes these types of outages. And a lot of the airports that went down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, it wasn't as simple as, oh, Delta had a problem. It was airports had problems with the gate controller. So the little machine that goes out the jetway, that goes out to the gate, a lot of airports had issues where the plane is there, they can't get the jetway out. So now you got a bunch of people captive on the plane and you got a bunch of people inside waiting to get on the plane, but we can't, we can't move them. It's not that we can't get tickets. It's, it's just that that jetway ain't moving no more. And there's other examples yeah. of that. One system in TSA goes down. Yeah, right. So no one can do um, the, the, the TSA check when you're going through there and they're doing the, the security scan and all the bags on the little thing, you know, for the carry-ons. That's, that'll stop yeah. an entire airport. Doesn't mean that every computer yeah. in the airport went down. Just that one went down. But no one ain't passing through security. So that means no one ain't going to, on no planes, have a nice day. Right. Yeah, I think... I think uh, let me and now that you put it in more perspective, I think to add more context to what I initially said was I guess when I said so many, I guess it's because it seemed like these were like large places. So it seems like, you know, like you said, sixteen percent. But if your sixteen percent is still millions of computers, all these big, yeah, right. It, it's like these big companies. You're gonna feel like it's bigger than what it it is versus it's not like every, you know, machine or whatever. And some companies that, you know, I asked them because I was, I think I was off. I took off right before the new paternity leave. So that day I didn't deal with it. And then I think at my company, they actually, they fixed it within like the they 24 seven. So I think they did like an incident bridge and fixed it in like a couple of hours. So people that came to work didn't even deal with the madness. But like you said, though, operationally, um, GRC type of stuff, like, kind of preparing for those things and wondering, hey, what happens if, now they know, what happens if CrowdStrike pushes out a, a something they'll need to push out yet? What will happen to the systems? Yep. Where's the testing going from on Microsoft's end? So I, I think it was, you know, I think it was a good, you know, learning yes. lesson. I don't think, you know, people lost a lot of money, but it, I say it always could be worse. It always you know, can be. Nobody it got hurt. Nobody. And I don't think we're done with the repercussions of it yet. I think more money is going to be lost. Some share value is going to mm -hmm. be lost. You know, it, that all happens. And a lot of that will normalize as well. But for the, the CISOs, the CIOs, the CFOs that are actually responsible for infrastructure, I think it's a valuable lesson on what do you need to do to simplify your infrastructure? What do you need to do to diversify your infrastructure a little bit? So if you got, you know, a lot of these big organizations have 100,000 computers. Some of them have mil a million computers, literally, one organization. So maybe you don't want a million of your computers having the same tool on them. So you split it up, 50% there, 50% there. So now you have a disaster plan. If, if X tool blows up, at least these other systems over here are working, so we have some level of redundancy. I, th I think more organizations are going to think about that, and more organizations are going to think about 
um, using managed services to just manage the entire process. If you if you had a good managed service in place, you would have caught that, hey, this, this um, um, update has some issues on it, and you could have stopped the update in time to where only 1% of your systems go down rather than all your systems go down. So there's, there's things that could be done um, in different environments. So 